I'd like to talk here about you know, the basics of scattering as it pertains to the uh, reciprocal space representation of solids. Uh, we're not going to talk about the details of, of scattering and how you solve, for example, the, the radiated uh, solutions, but we're just going to talk about the, the fundamentals of, of what uh, is being conserved and how the reciprocal space representation of uh, our quantum states is applicable to that. So the uh, idea is that if you have some incoming wave and some outgoing wave, they have a different wave vector, which means there has to be some you know, other vector which contributes to that and allows those vectors to be uh, the, the change in the wave vector. Uh, in kind of the, the simplest way to think about it, you can think about, uh, for example, an electron and a phonon interacting. So we could have some electron come in and a phonon come in and have the electron be scattered off in some other direction. Alternatively, we could have uh, an electron come in. It emits a phonon and the electron gets scattered off some other way. And you can imagine lots of different ways that you can combine electrons and phonons in order to get uh, basic scattering. And in terms of these uh, particles, and we'll, we'll talk about phonons uh, later, uh, but right now just think of them as uh, particles that represent uh, lattice vibrations. The, the two constraints here are really that energy and momentum must be conserved. And we, we know the two are related, uh, you know, ignoring uh, kind of second-order effects, uh, we can just think about these as having uh, some mass and, and some velocity, they change, and those will change the momentum. And if we think about these uh, purely in terms of the kinetic energy, which is, is a good approximation, uh, we know that then the energy and the momentum are related to each other. So let's uh, just talk about the momentum for now. and recognize that for a plane wave solution, our electron will be e to the i kr, and our phonon will be e to the i qr. So this k is the wave vector of the electron, and q is the wave vector of, of, of the phonon. So the momentum of the electron is equal to h bar k, and the momentum of the phonon is h bar q. <clears throat> and basically, then, we'll be talking about 
some incoming wave vector, some uh, sorry, in incoming uh, electron uh, as a wave vector, an outgoing electron as a wave vector, which we'll call that K prime for our outgoing, and then some phonon, let's say it's coming in, H bar Q. And if we say that P incoming is equal to the momentum of the outgoing, then we get K prime is equal to K plus Q, or whatever the, the combination is that you're considering. And that means that the scattering is really about the change in the wave vector, right? Because we're talking about how electrons change their uh, course. That's what's important in, in terms of thinking about uh, electrical conductivity or thermal conductivity. And, and this is then just equal to <clears throat> the phonon uh, being scattered. Now, we don't get a pick we don't get to pick the phonons. Uh, we, we take what nature gives us. Based on the lattice, based on the bond strength, you can think about our, our lattice as being, uh, you know, little uh, masses connected by springs, and if you hit it, there's going to be a, a set of lattice waves that, that pass through that. Uh, now, the, the unfortunate thing for us is, is that oftentimes, if, if we're talking about relevant scatter, for example, the, the scatter necessary <clears throat> to scatter across <coughs> Excuse me. To scatter uh, from one side of the uh, Fermi surface to the other, we're actually looking at a, a fairly uh, large value of Q. Uh, but what I want to show you is that there are other paths available, and those other paths uh, come about from our understanding of reciprocal space. So let's let's uh, let's think about and I'm gonna, I'm gonna write this up in the corner so we remember that's the focus of our of our problem. We're interested in the change in K. So let's let's think about uh, sodium metal, right? Well, uh, sodium metal, it's a uh, body center cubic. Uh, the cubic unit cell has a lattice parameter of around four angstrom, and there's two atoms in the cell. You can represent one in the corner and then one in the center. And if we want to think about this as a free electron metal in a free, in a free electron model, and for being sodium, which is S valent on the, on the far uh, left side of the periodic table, this is not an unreasonable way to think, then We've got a volume of 64 angstrom cubed, which gives us a charge, in, don't want to a charge in here, some uniform charge density, which is not really uniform, but we're going to approximate just the valence electrons as, as being uh, uh, free. <clears throat> then with two atoms, one electron, one valence electron per atom, and a volume of 64 angstrom. This gives us a charge density of 1 over 32 inverse angstrom cubed. <clears throat> 
which means that our Fermi, uh, K Fermi, is equal to 3 pi 1 over 32 to the 1 third or 0 0.974 inverse angstrom. Okay. We can understand that. But what's also important here is that we know our cubic lattice parameter. And we know from talking about the reciprocal space representation of the lattice that what's really important here is that we have uh, distances that are spaced periodically by uh, 2 pi over a, which for having a lattice parameter of around 4 is around 1.57 inverse angstrom. So what this means is it means that we have some reciprocal space representation of our lattice These are B1, B2, our reciprocal lattice vectors, and centered on one of these points is going to be our Fermi sphere and that's going to uh, be inside of our uh, reciprocal lattice. They're both in units, of course, of 1 over angstrom, or inverse length. <clears throat> and what I'm going to show you here is that when we have this representation, we can also represent it at each of these spheres. And I guess I, I drew this a little bit too big. Let me make it a little smaller here. That's better. So we can have our our uh, uh, free electron representation within which the free electron representation we know is a reciprocal space representation <clears throat> and we can have that within our representation of, of the lattice. Let's think about this from a Fourier space representation. Right? So if we have some lattice with lattice vectors A1, lattice vectors A2, then we know that any uh, vector which goes between two lattice points is a translation vector. And, and we know that what's inside of these boxes will translate. So, you know, what's happening here is also happening here. For example, we could have a charge density and then here we have a charge density 
which is identical, <clears throat> except it's been translated by T. And, and we know that uh, this can also be represented in, in K space. So let's, let's you know, jump over into our uh, Fourier space and, and then think of some function, which is a function of K. A good example of that might be a e to the i k dot r, right? Well, we can write this out, <clears throat> f k is equal to the sum over t f t e to the i k t. So that would be a, a Fourier representation of f of k. Uh, t, that is our, our translation ve uh, vectors in real space, right? So t right over here, t is equal to alpha 1 a1 plus alpha 2 a2 plus alpha 3 a3, where alpha i is an integer. Then We also know that that uh, set of coefficients can be written out as uh, an integral so integrating over the volume f k x negative i k dot T, where this is the volume of the reciprocal space lattice. So we're performing a triple integral over that reciprocal space volume. Okay, now if instead <clears throat> of k, you put in k plus g, some reciprocal space representation, or a, a reciprocal space uh, uh, vector that translates in reciprocal and the reciprocal lattice. And that would give us f k plus g is equal to sum t f t x i k plus g t is equal to the sum over t f of t x of i k t x of i g t <clears throat> and we know g t is equal to 2 pi n the you know n is an integer and the exact value of that depends on the exact value of g and t but it doesn't matter because 2 pi n going into this expression gives us x of i 2 pi n, which adds equal to 1, which returns sum t f of t x i k t equals f k. So having <clears throat> your f uh, representation in k space, for example, something such as this, we can translate in k space by a reciprocal lattice vector, g, and it has the same properties. So what this means for us, 
means that if we have our reciprocal space representation of the uh, Fermi surface, and we're interested in scatter from electrons that are near the Fermi surface. For example, let's say I have some excited state here, just outside of that Fermi surface. <clears throat> For example, if we had uh, electrical conductivity, right, and we had these shifted due to uh, an applied electric field. Now, that point or any point, so for example, let's say, uh, let's say I want to scatter back to here, right? Well, this point is the same here, it's the same here, it's the same here. So I could scatter all the way across my Fermi sphere, or I could scatter into the neighboring cell, or down here or down here. Those are all equivalent, those are all equivalent scattering events. Well, not exactly. And not exactly because we have to think about the conservation of momentum of the uh, phonon, right? So if this h bar k is this value of k, those two are the same, and we talk about there's some phonon given off, which is q, uh, h bar q. Well, in terms of the electron's behavior and it coming back and reoccupying uh, a state on the other side, basically changing the direction of its velocity, uh, we can have different phonons that give us equivalent scattering behavior. And in fact, <clears throat> if we, let's draw a, uh, I'm going to draw the, the midpoint between these g vectors. If we have a scattering event, we can have it be within this first range of points. And this first range of points I just outlined, it is uh, sitting between uh, neighboring reciprocal lattice points, and this represents what we would call the first Brewan zone, and, and we'll talk about that uh, more, but uh, scattering within that is, is what we've talked about so far, but you can also have scatter from one Brewan zone to the next. And the interesting thing here is that you can have a fairly short uh, uh, change, small change in K, right? Meaning that you don't need a very uh, uh, energetic phonon to hop across the Brewan zone. And when you go from one side to the other side, you change the sign of your phonon. Oh, so you, sorry, you change the sign of your uh, K vector. So you could actually have a electron which scatters backward. Uh, and that's through this process of scattering between the spheres. And <clears throat> this type of scattering is called Unklopp scattering. I don't know what that means in German, but it sounds a little bit like an onomatopoeia to me, uh, umklop. And, and this is what this, this type of scattering is, is referred to as.
So let's let's look at an example again of sodium metal. So sodium metal uh, I can just erase all this, I guess. Body, center cubic, sodium. Okay. following uh, lattice vectors. So this is the this is the uh, primitive cell oh, and a a a a round or angstrom. So with this, we get V is equal to A1 dot A2 cross A3 is equal to A2 angstrom cubed. Uh, that volume allows us to calculate the reciprocal lattice vectors. So sorry. So our remember our V vector is two pi over V <coughs> A uh, J cross A K, where I, J, and K are taken to be cyclic. So this means that the magnitude of V1 is 2.221 inverse angstrom. And substituting in uh, for before, we had a K Fermi of around one angstrom, which means that if we draw this out, and we've got a reciprocal lattice point there. Okay, so the spacing between these points is around 2 angstrom, right? It's the uh, nearest neighbor distance in reciprocal space. Our Two point two angstrom inverse two point two inverse angstrom. Okay, got that. Uh, we have a K Fermi of one, which means that the distance between these two Fermi surfaces 
is around 0 0.2 inverse angstrom. So if we had, say, an applied electric field that shifted all of our uh, Fermi sphere, say, to the right, we could scatter back across at which point we would need uh, Q of around 2 inverse angstrom, or we could just as well scatter to the right, at which point we would only need Q of around 0 0.2 inverse angstrom. So a whole order of magnitude difference. And <clears throat> this is an element of, of uh, scattering, this Umklopf scattering, uh, which we can use to explain different trends in metals. Because you know, sodium is, is a relatively uh, simple structure. As we get to more complex structures, uh, the shape of these Fermi surfaces uh, and the relationship becomes uh, much more complicated. But that's where uh, it's the shape that gives us actually a lot of the very interesting properties of, of different metals, in particular, uh, for example, the transition metals.